Well, you guys got another CPU cooler here that we're going to be doing a review on. This is the Deep Cool Gamma Max GT RGB cooler designed for Intel and AMD and also supports every motherboard manufacturer for your RGB needs. This is the specs that you can expect with this cooler. I'll leave this on the screen so you can pause and read it at your own leisure. But for this price point, it's a pretty good cooler. This is exactly what you're going to get inside the box. You're going to get everything you need to get up and running. First thing you can look at here is your back plate. It is made of plastic, but it does do the job pretty well. Really easy to install this one. And I'll show you how to do the installation and I'll show you the thermals at the end of the video. If you want to skip all that, you can just skip to the end of the video and see what the thermals are like. Here we have our brackets for AMD and Intel as well. Inside the bag, you're going to get your cables, your mounting screws, your bolts, also a bit of compound and some fan hangers in here. Now you've got your easy to follow uh, installation guide here. Very simple uh, installation guide for this particular type of cooler. We've got pictures here, as you can see. It tells you exactly how to install this. I'll show you how to install it. Very simple and easy to do. It does support Intel and AMD, as I've said, but just check for your uh, CPU socket to make sure it supports it. I'm pretty sure it will do. Here is your fan. This is your addressable RGB fan, but it does support motherboards that don't have the addressable RGB uh, header on the board. You can actually use the remote control with a SATA connection on there. You can see the connections on here. It does have a PWM connectors for the power as well on there. And this is the actual cooler itself, made of aluminium, as you can see. Uh, four copper pipes on each side here. Nice uh, copper on the bottom of this uh, uh, sticker here and when I remove it you'll see the copper here two mounting screws uh, for this simple easy mechanism got the addressable RGB up on the top here which syncs to your motherboard which means you can have any sort of color you like it does have a black uh, plate on the top of this one but you can get one in chrome as well so it does feel pretty smooth let's take a look here nice and flat at the bottom here so you should get good dissipation of heat on here there's no big grooves inside here where the compound can slip into, which makes it uh, dry out very easily. But this one does have a pretty good uh, thermals on it, as you'll see later on in the video. So let's go ahead and get this installed onto the motherboard here. So we're going to be using this B550 uh, motherboard from Asus. It's a budget board, but we're going to be needing to remove these brackets here because we don't need these. So these are four screws we need to remove and the plastic brackets. I'm not going to be removing every single screw, but I'll just show you one here so you can see, and then I'll move on to the next stage so you can see how to remove it. You just need a standard Phillips screwdriver for this. So once you've removed your bracket, keep that to one side and keep your screws safe, and then just remove the other side here. Once you've removed this, you can now remove the back plate. Now some of these callers allow you to use the stock back plate on here but unfortunately this one you do have to use their back plate which is made of plastic so sometimes check it out some of the coolers do allow you to use the default back plate here so we're going to be needing to use this you can see it's written on the back here amd and intel just make sure you've got the right side facing you for uh, your particular type of cpu that you're using so if you're using amd make sure you've got the amd side there otherwise you're going to run into problems so we need to get some nuts here from out of the kit and then just push them into the back here and they just slot in here. You do have to push a bit hard to clip them into place. Once they're clipped into position like that, this has a thread on the other side, which means we can screw into it. And that's basically how you do the back plate. So just put the nuts into position here. Now, whether you're using AMD or Intel will determine what orientation this back plate needs to be to push these into position. And depending on what socket you're using will determine which position you put the nuts into, if that makes sense. So we've got this into position here, and I'm just checking it to make sure it fits up in the holes, and it does. So I'm just going to flip this back over, like so. And we can then use the table as a bit of support here. Try not to do this on a cardboard box, because you will get a bit of flex, and it will make it a bit more difficult. So just get your um, standoffs here to screw into the little threads here. Very simple and easy to do. Just tighten these down finger tight. You don't need to over tighten these. And there's four of these, so you just need to put four of them in. And I'm just going to finger tighten these down. And that is the last one here. So just give these a little tighten up with my fingers. So you don't want to use a pair of pliers or anything like that for these, otherwise you'll over tighten these and they break the plastic attachments. So now get the 
bracket that suits your chip. So this is an AMD one. So we're going to be using AMD. I'm just measuring up here to make sure they're in the right position here. So you can see there is a little screw here and it can move from side to side to just toggle that into the right position to make sure it fits. Okay. So you can see it's sliding backwards and forwards. So just make sure you got that in the right position. Now we need to offer up our little bracket here and it only goes in one way. It's a little cutout on this uh, bracket and uh, the little elbows on these need to be facing inwards on the AMD. You can see here, there's a little notch here and that just sits in the groove here on the aluminium. Once we've got that done, we can tighten down our screw. And uh, once we've got this tight, that should hold that into position. And I'll do the other side as well. And that should look something like this. Remove the little sticker here. And now what we're going to do is get a bit of compound on our uh, chip. You've got your fan hangers here. There's two lots of them here, which means you can have up to two fans on here if you wanted to. It only comes with one fan in the kit. And as I've said before, if you don't have addressable RGB on the motherboard, you can use this here, which has a SATA power connector on it. And also this remote control to change the colors. Uh, but the best way to go about this is obviously addressable RGB, which is this connector here, which goes to the motherboard. And then again, you would have all the colors addressed by a piece of software or the motherboard. So you can see here, I'm going to put a bit of thermal compound on, and then I'm just going to smear mine around. You can either use the blob method, line method, cross method, whatever method you want. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to smooth that out. There we go. So we've got that smoothed out. Now I'm going to offer up the cooler here and line this up with the screw holes. And then once we've got this down, make sure you've got the cables around the right side here as it's going to make it a bit more difficult to route the cables. And then just tighten those screws down uh, alternately from diagonal from one side to the other until you uh, get some resistance and then it stops. Okay. Once that's done, you get the fan hangers out and then just put them in the back uh, holes here and then just offer the fan up and then clip this into position. Now, this is always a bit fiddly. Uh, but once you've done a few of them, it's not too bad. But with the tripod in the way, it just makes it a little bit more difficult. So I'm just going to put these clips in. And literally, uh, once we get those clips in, we can now hook this uh, back on. Now you'll see there's a little gap in between here, the fins, and this is where this wire slips into like so. Okay, that's into position now. All I need to do is put the cables in. I'm going to put the PWM uh, fan header on to the board into the CPU fan. And then we've got the addressable RGB to go to the motherboard, which I'll do a little bit later on. Here we have our bracket and our plastic mounts here. Just screw them down to the back plate here and keep this safe just in case you want to replace this. And it should look something like this. I'm using a, a purple color here, but you can use whatever color you like. It is addressable RGB. So you will get a bunch of effects with it, like rainbow mode, breathe mode, uh, strobe all that sort of stuff but this is just on static color which is what I prefer myself so take a look at the thermals here run Cinebench and I just wanted to show you the temperature that it got to as you can see here it got to around about 64.1 something like that and uh, pretty good for a cooler of this caliber and uh, so yeah pretty impressed with this particular cooler and that's the maximum temperature it got running Cinebench so very good thermals for this particular uh, PC. Now yours may vary depending on how many fans you've got. Idle temperatures, as you can see on this system, were around about 32 uh, Celsius idle, 31.8 as you can see there. So not too shabby for this particular type of uh, system. And it is an APU here that we're using on this system. Anyway, that is the review over with. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Big shout out to my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I do appreciate the support. Links are in the video description. I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now.